Call this meeting to Abilene City Council to order. It's 11:15 on this beautiful Monday morning. I announce uh, Mayor Pro Tem Wilde Hurt by his invocation. Afterwards, Travis Quay will provide the uh, pledges. Uh, please pray with me, dear Lord. There are times when we forget, but today we need to tell you how thankful we are for your guidance and, and just look for your guidance, Lord, as we go through these next few weeks. We ask guidance uh, for our for all of our leaders, for our nation leaders, our state leaders, and our local leaders. Lord, just help us make the decisions that are best to make this world a better place. Lord, watch over our first responders, and Lord, at this time, please watch over all those providing medical attention. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now our pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. On honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. You know, we say those pledges every time we, we meet, and giving all the respect to those who serve both nationally and statewide and in the last few weeks I'm just uh, impressed with our country uh, and our state how we're responding and really today is really by taking care of some business that allows us to respond uh, appropriately uh, we're going to pull um, agenda item number three um, Stanley will speak to that in just a bit just so we have clarity um, we're going to talk about in the first agenda item number two, we'll talk about being sure that we're consistent with uh, the governor um, and what he has communicated so we're being consistent. And then agenda item number four, we'll talk about ways that the city uh, can partner in the community. You'll hear in the next few weeks um, about the United ways that things are doing in our community. And our city manager is wanting to provide an opportunity for employees who are working for you, our citizens, to help out in this endeavor. But we'll go to item number two now and um, remind everyone, um, and Robert Hanna will, will present that, we will have a public hearing on all, uh, on both items uh, to allow you to participate in the conversation. Mr. Hanna? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what you have before you today, uh, is an extension of the local disaster due to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the language we are requesting council to follow uh, mirrors the language that the governor issued on March 19th in his executive order GA-08, which was effective 1159 March 20th, 2020. In the event we need to extend this another seven days, which frankly I anticipate we probably will, um, we will have another special call meeting to do that. Um, does council have any questions? And this will be a, a public hearing. I want to communicate that I have the authority to do it, to extend it every seven days without a, a, a public hearing, but we really want it to provide the public an opportunity to participate if they chose to. Um, and that's what we'll have a public hearing. But does council have any questions or comments prior to the public hearing? So, so we're just basically extending what the state of Texas is doing. I, we're not going further than what the state of Texas is doing. No, sir. At this time, we are not being any more restrictive than the, than the governor's order. Okay. Um, I, I will say at the moment, um, uh, I just looked at the numbers. We still have zero confirmed cases. A confirmed case is a positive test result. Um, we have a number of outstanding tests, and we'll be publishing those numbers on our websites very shortly um, but at this point in time I think as long as we practice social distancing in our community um, we can avoid um, much of what is going on in other parts of our country in California in Illinois uh, in Dallas County uh, we need citizens to be responsible and to take this declaration seriously thank you and I just have a question on timing the the governor's declaration, executive order, goes through April 3rd, but we only can take action for seven days, so we'll need to renew even before the governor's order's up. That's correct. And we want to purpose to be able to 
to pivot if we need um, to. And I want to just pause and just thank um, not just our city manager, Robert Hanna, but Ned Lerma and others who, um, for, the, for, gosh, the last 15 consecutive days have worked on this issue. Um, there's not a handbook. There is not any sort of guidelines on what we should be doing. And so we're doing the very best that we can. There may be a need for us to make a modification. I think we've said that from the very beginning, but we're going to do all that we can to be sure that we um, protect while we serve um, this community. Any questions from the council before the public hearing? This item does call for a public hearing. So at this time, I will open up the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak either for or against item? If so, please come forward to give your name for the record. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Does council have any additional questions or comments? If not, I accept a motion and a second. So second. We have a motion by Councilman McAllister and a second by Councilman Hurt. If for a discussion, we're ready to vote. Mayor Pro Tem Hurt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Albus? Yes. Councilmember Price? Yes. Councilmember Rents? Yes. Councilmember McAllister? Yes. Councilmember Craver? Yes. And Mayor Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Although item three um, is pulled and not under consideration, I thought it would be prudent for Stanley just to have a conversation about the thought process around uh, agenda item number three. Sure, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, there's a provision in the Public Information Act that's been present for a long time. It's not really tied to the current uh, local disaster, but it allows a community or a local government, whether it be a school district or a county or a city or some other type of entity that's subject to the Public Information Act, if there is some sort of disaster or some sort of situation, you know, say the hurricane that we had down on the coast that uh, temporarily hinders a local government from uh, complying with the Public Information Act, that the governmental body can say, well, for the time being, we're going to suspend that for seven days and for up to another seven days. That's as long as you can suspend it for up to 14 days. And that allows, during that time of local disaster, to, to kind of put everything on hold uh, for that time period. And then after the 14 days, the requirement to respond to those public information requests kicks back in. So it doesn't prevent people from making requests. It doesn't uh, stop the uh, local government from having to respond to those requests. It kind of just puts everything in a holding pattern for just a period of time while the local disaster is going on. Uh, that's really all it does. Um, it's not used very often, but uh, I've been kind of tracking uh, what, what entities are, are following it. Uh, the Attorney General has a, a site that shows those things publicly. Um, in the last couple of weeks, it's gone from one or two to, I, I just checked, it's about 23 uh, type of entities that have requested that at this point. So I, I anticipate it to increase, but it's not something that um, is a dire situation at this point. And one thing that we try to posture is um, plan for the very worst scenario, and at the same time, pray and hope for the best. Um, to be in a situation that we can respond appropriately. And so the demands um, of public information is respond within 10 days. Well, and we're not there, and I don't think we'll get there, but there could be a situation where dynamics could change, and City Hall is then dark, um, and then want to follow the law, I think staff's recommendation was this provision helps us. Uh, just have a brief conversation. I don't think we're there yet. And so it's pulled. It's not under consideration. Um, but not knowing even what tomorrow looks like, we may be before you uh, in your future differently. But we want to provide that information. Mr. Hayden, you want to say anything, Mr. Hanna? I do, Mayor. Um, you know, our job as staff members is to give council all the opportunities to make the decisions that they were elected to do. And so that's really what we're doing here. Um, is, is just to do that. So i um, happy to go in whatever direction council wants. We've tabled this item for now. Um, if we need it again, we'll bring it up. Yeah. And, and part of how it works here, so staff and their diligence provides recommendations to us and ultimately it's up to the policymakers to make the decision. So mm -hmm. at this time we're pulling that. But I just wanted to pause and provide an opportunity for you just to be aware of that. Can, can I ask a question of Stanley? Am I allowed to do that? You sure, Greg. Okay, so, so when it says 
and I got an email about that this morning. That's why I'm thinking about this. We're not we we're not doing anything today, but this would not suspend public information. It would just delay the amount of time for us to respond to it. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So we're not we're not shutting down information. We're not no withholding information. It's just that if we're dark and people are having to work from home and there's nobody here, then what is a business day at that point? It's just a pause okay. based upon the local okay. All right. Thank you. That's what I wanted. To do. Thank you. And, and again, uh, the whole thought process is to put the city in the best position available. When I say seven days a week, I really mean seven days a week. Um, in fact, you even had staff working all day yesterday in preparation for things coming up this week. But we'll provide the information. We'll now move to item number four. I'll ask Robert Hanna to present this item. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my computer here wakes back up again. So what bef what's before you today is a Chapter uh, 380 agreement, um, and this Chapter 380 agreement uh, would allow the City of Abilene to partner with United Way and any of their partner agencies. Um, the Chapter 380 agreement, uh, Chapter 380 of the Texas Local Government Code allows the city to provide an economic development program, including uh, public employees' labor. And in the past, we've been in situations like with the uh, Tornado, where city employees have gone to work for 211 temporarily just to answer calls. Um, at 11 o'clock today, we have employees there now answering calls. I'd like to put this under the cover of the law and actually have uh, a legal uh, document that says I'm authorized to do this. Um, and so this would allow us um, to, provide, to, to have that document. It also allows potentially the opportunity for funding, direct funding, if that should ever be necessary. Um, how would that come into play? Well, if the food bank needs assistance, if rental housing needs assistance, um, if people need assistance with utility bills, if people need assistance with basic needs, um, and for whatever reason, um, we're the last man standing, so to speak, and we have the opportunity to help, then, then we can help. Uh, this creates a formal process where that's allowed under the law. Um, I don't anticipate that today, uh, but at the same time, I'm trying to contemplate, I'm thinking 10 chess moves out. We're trying to make sure we have every opportunity uh, to assist our community and our citizens and our neighbors uh, to the best of our ability. At the bottom end of the day, this is their taxpayer, their money. And this could allow us to get it back to them if necessary. So our public, our public CEOs, our superintendents, city manager, all have made decisions to pay their staff. So. We have individuals that are on the payroll. And so decision is made. So we have employees. We're reducing some services. And we reallocate their work towards the better of our community. And so this allows us to do so in a very transparent way. So rather than just do this, we want to put it before the community, allow the community uh, to participate in a conversation, um, um, and really um, allow us to, to be successful in some of the things we talked about um, that we may need to participate down the road. 70% um, of all business in Abilene or employees are in the service industry. Uh, and because of the current climate and restrictions, a number of families, our neighbors, who are going to be um, in need. And so mm -hmm. we want to do our part. The council have any questions for the public hearing? No, Robert, is there any type of time limit or, I mean, we're not funding long-term jobs, and I just want to make a clarification on that. So it's it, just in times of need, correct? It, this would be in times of need, and frankly, um, this would be, I would renew it with council if I ever did it again. This is really for the COVID-19 response. Okay, thank you. Any questions from council for the public hearing? You know, this, you mentioned the, the tornado that we had mm -hmm. and how Abilene came together. And I think this is just another type of storm. I mean, it's, it's not a, a weather storm, it's, a, it's an economic storm that we're going through. And I think this will show how the people of Abilene come together and help each other. So I appreciate the opportunity that we're going to have to help people. Uh, and, and I think it's great. I think that's, that's what makes us different. You, you know, we were talking about all the other, some other cities and counties and states that are having issues. Man, but they're not Abilene. And, and this is what I think makes Abilene great, is that we're willing to help each other out regardless of, of what it costs. Any questions or comments from the council before the public hearing? And uh, just to answer your uh, statement or question, uh, there is a one-year hard end to the Chapter 380, and it 
That's true. Can end earlier, but it cannot extend more than a year by the terms of the contract. And again, at this time, uh, we're not writing a check. Uh, we're out. We're just allowing our employees who are on the payroll of the city to participate in serving our neighbors. And Mayor, any funding request would have to go through the same channels and procedures that is required under state law. So if, if we did something over $50,000, it would have to come for council for approval. And if council wanted me to bring anything under $50,000, you could direct me to do that now. But that my intention is not to, um, my intention is just to have a tool that's available if it's necessary. And we know there, there will be a, a need for us to respond. Yes, sir. You have questions before the public hearing? This item does call for a public hearing. So at this time, I will open up the, uh, open up the public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak either for or against this item? If so, please come forward to give you name for the record. See no one, I'll close the public hearing. Council, have any additional comments or questions? If not, I accept the motion and second. We have a motion by Council McCraver and a second by Councilwoman Alvis. Any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Mayor Pro Tem Hurt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Alvis? Yes. Councilmember Price? Yes. Councilmember Renz? Yes. Councilmember McAllister? Yes. Councilmember Craver? Yes. And Mayor Williams? Yes. Motion carries. At 1131 a.m. And before we dismiss, Mayor, if we know, can you address how the council hand meeting will be handled Thursday with regard to public input, the meeting size, et cetera? Stan, do you have any concerns with that at all? No. Perfect. So um, we'll be exercising the new provisions of the Texas Open Meeting Act that allows us to continue public's business uh, by broadcasting on Channel 2. We'll also have a dial-in line um, that citizens can dial in. That'll be on the agenda. I think it's on the agenda now. It's not. It's, no. not, it's not yet. It'll be today. It'll be today. Um, we're still dotting our I's and crossing our T's on the technology. Um, but many cities are doing it this way. Uh, you'll be able to call in. There may be a screen from the standpoint of, of, okay, this is your question. Now ask your question sort of thing. We're working, we're working through the details. But the bottom line is there will be a number that you can call in so the public can participate. Um, City Hall will be closed to the public uh, starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, that is a, uh, something that many of our peer cities are doing. It's an effort to make sure that we uh, help encourage and promote social distancing and to keep people um, away from, from gathering. I wouldn't think people just come to hang out at City Hall, but I'm told sometimes they do. I'm not quite, I don't know sure why, but you know, we're a bunch of happening people over here. Um, so that, that is how we'll handle that. Uh, the citizens will have an opportunity to call in and participate with their elected officials. Uh, they will not be shut out uh, from the public process. Thank you. Thank you. It's 11.33 a.m. And this being the Alabama City Council is adjourned.